Good day, this is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. And we are today in a psalm called Psalm 119. But in Psalm 119, the precepts of the Lord that I hear, and I have a good, very, some very, very good, very good study guides on Psalm 119. I could probably take Psalm 119 preached from daylight to dark, uh, and from dark to daylight, a steady, constant 300 days straight, or 354 days straight, a whole year, and never cover the whole psalm. And, and all of the things that came from this psalm. There was a group of men in the Bible that tried their dead level best to follow the Psalm 119. And those men are men that we are to uh, pattern ourselves after in the sense of following God, in the sense of following close to God, and then in the sense of obedience. Wow! Oh my goodness! As I think about it, these men, all of these men, any time, any time that these men stepped out of line just a little bit, just a second, there was consequences for that. And that, that gives me great fear to step out of line when I'm being called by God to do a specific thing. I have been called by God to put these pH tidbits on the uh, thing. These ought to be called tidbits from God, the Lord, the God of heaven, the Lord of the heaven and the earth. And that's what they are, but he's using this body to put them on. Is there any uh, gain, personal gain for PH, Peter Hutchins? Is there any personal gain for him in this? None. None. Absolutely none. There will be spiritual gain in heaven. But is there physical gain on the earth? No. And there doesn't need to be. There doesn't need to be. That's not why I'm here. I'm here because God commanded me to use this spot to do this work. Uh, I'm an uneducated, <laughs> very, very, very uneducated man. But I have been blessed by God and been given the knowledge to run a company, to do things, to come through life seemingly a little bit unscathed, and to come through life the way I have. I lived on such a small financial shoestring uh, when I had all six of my children at home that I came under the eye of the IRS and the United States government and they said, Mister, there is no way possible under the sun you could live with six children on the salary you say you made. You've got to be lying about it. I got news for you. I wasn't lying about it. We did live on that salary and we did do many things on that salary that other people couldn't do on a big salary. That's because we narrowed down and we did everything as God would have it. By the way, we had a uh, little long flat 34 inch cook stove uh, that ran on wood and had a chimney run up through the house. That wood heated the house and that wood cooked our food. And we cooked our food on the stove we got the heat from. Well, that's called being, uh, I don't know, it's not being slothful, let's put it that way. And so that's the way we did. In the winter time, we cooked and ate off from that stove and got our heat too. So we did away with many of the expenses that other people had. We drove one car, that's what we had, one car. We used that one car, or even at a period of time, a long time, while I had the six children. We, we ran our life this way. We took our children to school. By the way, we had six children in Christian school. You say, well, you, you on $13,000 a year, you can't do that. Well, let me tell you what we did. I got on the hood of the car, my wife drove on the way back from school, and every time I saw a bottle, I waved my hand, she'd stop, and I'd get out and pick that bottle up. When we got down to the store that was near the house, we took those bottles out of there, and we put that much gas in the car. And that's what we put in the car. That's what we ran our gas on. You say, well, then you made an income off from that. I'm not going to call that an income. <laughs> I'm going to say I was trading the bottles for gas, 
and that wasn't an income, but that did get us up and down the road during that period of time. Now, God makes a way for everybody. Laziness is not included in that. A lazy person can lazy himself out of the blessings of God. Now, in the wintertime, what we did, that very wood that we cut for our own self, that we had there, we had a yard full, and we sold a uh, trunk full of wood. A person could pull up and say, I need a trunk full of that wood. Why, good. We would trade that trunk full of wood for enough money, go down and get a gallon of milk, a loaf of bread, and something to eat. And that's how we lived. And that was the way it, it was. And God blessed. And He will bless a man that's not lazy, not slothful. We were not slothful. We planted some garden. We did some things that other people didn't do. And therefore, God blessed us and brought us through. But God made a plan for man. And that plan, part of that plan was living off the land, living out of the best way you can, and not being slothful, and not being wasteful. My wife and I, when we went to the store, we didn't buy anything that wasn't going to be eaten uh, um, almost immediately. We didn't buy anything. We didn't buy spare stuff that had stock uh, and opened a food cupboard and there was a bunch of food. No, a box of cereal among six children and a gallon of milk was going to be gone very quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> I look back at that now and you know something? I don't ever remember going without I don't remember any days of going without. I don't remember going without. I don't remember uh, in my family since I've been married. I don't remember a day without something to eat. And I don't remember the, uh, 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 some days like that. I do remember some days like that when I was growing up. I remember days like I remember I carried a sack with some folded up paper to school like it was a lunch. And I didn't have anything to eat for days on end sometimes. Went to school that way. And, and didn't let anybody know it. Didn't let anybody know it. We, we, uh, we had some times in our life where I, I don't remember the longest time we went without us. Without one single solitary bite of food in the house, we had done that. And I remember in the wintertime, and I, we, were, we were sure enough poor. I had to go to school. I went to school before with no underwear underneath my pants in the wintertime uh, where we were because I didn't have any. And so we did, we did, we were raised poorly. And, but listen, I don't remember any unhappy days. I don't remember an unhappy day. A poor person without something to eat and without something good to wear, yet they weren't unhappy days. Because of that, I meet people now. I've done a lot of street work with a lot of street people, especially in lower Atlanta. And I talk with them just like they were living in a house just like I am. And they were happy. They were happy living wherever they were living, under a bridge or wherever. I have had them tell me how to stay warm. Say, say, Pete, do you know how to stay warm on a cold night? Roll up in some newspapers, find a piece of plastic and roll up in it and, and get you can be just as warm as that guy sleeping in the house and be just as happy. And and I met more happy street people than you can count. They're not looking for a house. They're not looking for what the rest of the world per se has. They're happy within themselves. Now, you can be happy in Jesus. Now, let's get back in the book. I ran a rabbit trail there. Abraham. Do you remember Abraham? Do you know anything about Abraham? Have you studied Abraham? If you are a Christian and you are watching this excerpt, you need to get your Bible out and study Abraham. The first man that God took and raised a Jewish nation from this man he was the first man to be an Israelite or a Jewish man. Actually, Isaac, his son, was. Abraham was grafted in, but Isaac was born in to uh, this uh, line of people. In Genesis 26 and 24, you will find the beginning of that story. Get in it and find it. Then we have Jacob. Jacob was the man... That his name was changed to Israel. Jacob was a subplanter. Jacob was a man that was born. You know that when Abraham was born, he was born into a heathen family. He was born into a star-worshiping family, a pagan family that worshipped all kinds of gods and all kinds of things. And God called him out of that and to the land of Ur. 
But and then here's Jacob, a subplanter. And he come and Esau came along. Well, God chose Jacob. Isaiah 41 and 8. Look these up and for yourself. And then we've got a guy came along. His name was Moses. Everybody knows the little story of Moses being put in the bulrushes in a basket and how the the queen of uh, Egypt found him, brought him out, and how Pharaoh raised him up, and how at an age of uh, perhaps 30, he took off from there and wanted to do the command of God. Numbers 12 and 7, Joshua 1.1. 1, 1. Look at Samuel. Here's another guy, Samuel. You need to know this man. What do you know about Samuel? Find out about Samuel. Read about Samuel. Find the testing and the trials and the things Samuel went through and where he came out at the other end. David. David's one of the biggest champions in this list of men that I'm giving you right now. There are a list of men I'm giving you. Look up David, 2 Samuel 7, 9 through 29, and see about this man, David. Start out with his life. Kings 19:34. And, and look, find out about this man, David. And then there was uh, uh, Ajah and Elijah and Ajah in 1 Kings 14 and 8. Listen, if God put him in the Word and talked about him and the man that he was and the chosen people that God had him, he wants you and I to learn from these people. Man, Elijah. Here come Elijah, man, a man after God's own heart, Elijah, uh, a working man in 2 Kings. After Elijah had had a great, great victory, he ran and hid from uh, a, a woman. And, and uh, Elisha, we got Jonah. Jonah, a called man of God, spoke about just one little old time in the Bible, in the book of Jonah. Actually, he spoke about more than that. Because Jesus spoke about him. And Jesus said, As Jonah was in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. And then, and then we got Hezekiah. Hezekiah the king. Look at that in Second Chronicles. Read about Hezekiah. Read what happened to him. Wow. I tell you what, you'll find out if you go astray from God, some things can happen to you you don't want to happen to to you. And then we got Job. Look at Job. A man that didn't sin. A man that never had sinned. A man that was after God's own heart. A perfect man in his heart. A righteous man. And God allowed him to go through some testing because he was righteous. Because he was righteous. Job never failed God. <coughs> Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah. The man God revealed the future to Isaiah. The man God revealed the cross in Isaiah 53 to Isaiah 55. Look at the man Isaiah. Elikim. Look at him in Isaiah. The man that helped Isaiah. Isaiah 22 20 and the, uh, the Messiah that came out of Isaiah. The Messiah that was talked about and came out of Isaiah. Then you got Nebuchadnezzar in Jeremiah 25, by the way, and you got uh, Jeremiah. Oh, what a prophet. What a prophet Jeremiah was. A man that was almost like he was condemned to never be believed, to never be loved, or never be followed. And yet, he did the job he was supposed to do. And then you got Daniel. Oh, you remember Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember how they got thrown in the fire, refurnished, and the the, the fourth one in there, like the Son of God. Oh, read those stories. You got Zerubbabel in Haggai. Haggai 2.23. Look at this man, Zerubbabel. Look at this man, Simeon. Oh, what a man. Simeon, up in Luke. Said he couldn't die until Jesus, until he saw the Messiah. Then he could die. He said, I'm, I'm ready now. I can go on. And then you got Paul. Paul the Apostle. The persecutor of the Christians. The man brought forth from God out of his mother's womb. The man chosen from his mother's womb, God said. I chose you from your mother's womb. I chose you to be my man. And yet he was out killing the Christians. He was doing it righteously, if you will look at that. 
as it went. And, and then we got Epaphrasus, a man that helped Paul. A man that helped Paul, a man that went on. I must go on. We got James, Peter, Jude, and John in the New Testament. Those men that were called of God. Look at this list of men that I just named. Look them up. Learn them one by one. Read the stories of these men and see how God used them. How when they failed, though, how they got it to be a reproach to themselves and to the people around them and to God so you and I won't fail. I must go now. My time has come, gone, and is at the end. I'll see you next time, Brother Peter, with tidbits from the Word. Have a blessed and lovely life. We do pray in Jesus' name. Is how we pray that. Amen.